Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Out of Body. My name is Sabrina and wow, has it been a long time since I've been on here with a background. I just wanna quickly say thank you to all of you who have come on board lately and subscribed. Um, we're 600 strong now, I'm so grateful for that. And just thank you to all of you who have stuck around, who've been here for a long time and been following me for a while and who've been checking up on me and all of that, I really appreciate it. So today's episode of Haunted Memphis actually surrounds the haunting at Court Square. More specifically, a spirit that lingers around the gigantic fountain that is in the middle of a Court Square. Now this fountain was donated back in 1876 by city leaders and it is called the Hebe Fountain. I think I pronounced that right, hopefully. If not, forgive me, but it's H-E-B-E -E Fountain and it's named after a um, figure in Greek mythology, Hebe, who was the cupbearer to the gods. Now the fountain was made out of concrete and was six and a half feet deep and at that time actually housed turtles and large catfish and even supposedly the occasional alligator, which yeah, that's massive. So the statue is actually made out of cast iron and the fountain and statue total is 20 feet high and weighs around 7,000 pounds. Interestingly enough, there was actually a movement back in 1932 where some people got together and tried to get the statue taken down because as you can see in the photos, the lady is actually nude from the waist up, which was a big no-no back then. So the statue is still there today. So obviously it didn't work. Now, if you're familiar with the movie, The Firm, you might know that it was actually filmed here. The fountain can actually be seen in the background of one of the shots in that film. So the fountain still stands today. Um, there are no fish or turtles or alligators in it. There's still water. It also has a cast iron fence around it, which it should have had to begin with, which leads me into the ghost story and the story behind what happened at this fountain. So a little boy named Claude Pugh was born in 1874 and in 1884 when he was 10 years old he loved playing around the fountain and on August 26, 1884 Claude was playing around the fountain like he normally would I assume and he was playing with a little boat toy in the water and he was sitting on the edge because back then there wasn't a fence around the fountain. There was just a con like a concrete edge. And he was sitting on that edge, kind of leaned over playing with his toy. And there was a lot of people around. There was tons of people around um, that could see him and, and that were enjoying whatever was going on at that time. I think there was some kind of festival going on that day. I'm not 100% on that. So anyway, he was playing with his toy. And at one point he leans over too far and he actually falls into the fountain. Now, most of us would think, well, that's not a bit that big of a deal. Fountains are just like, what, two feet deep? Well, as I said earlier, this one is six and a half feet deep. This is a 10 year old boy. And supposedly he was kind of small for his age. The sides of the fountain had algae on it because of all the fish in there. So when he tried to climb out, tried to regain his footing, it was really slippery and very unfortunately, he was not able to get himself out. Now, like I said earlier, there were bystanders, there were people everywhere on this day. People saw him fall in. People saw him trying to get out, not able to get out, and they didn't do anything. I'll get into that here in a second. So eventually somebody does call 911 or, or whatever they did back then <laughs> um, to alert the authorities. Um, the firemen get there and it takes him about 15 minutes to get to him. And unfortunately by then it was too late. Now Claude Pugh was the only son of a widow and he is buried at Elmwood Cemetery. So the next day after he died, um, the Memphis Daily Appeal had an article about what happened there. And in that article, I'm gonna read off what they actually wrote because um, it kind of gives you an idea of the, the reaction of society to the people there that just watched him drown. It says, there were a number of men, women, and children in the square at the time, and not an effort was made to save him. Stalwart men did not move a muscle, but stood silently by with staring eyes and gaping mouths. Their hearts must have been made of stone and the milk of human kindness in their breasts sour way. More consideration should have been given a dumb beast. So obviously people who, you know, heard about it later were outraged that 
you know, that there were people there that saw him drown and didn't do anything about it. And still it just baffles me. Like I keep saying it, but it's just, it just baffles me that that would happen. Like, how could you see any aged person <laughs> fall into something like that? And especially a child and clearly not be able to get themselves out and just stand there and watch. I mean, I, I just can't even imagine. Like, I, I can't even swim, and I'm like only five foot tall, so I'd probably drown in that, but I would still jump in and try to get him out, you know? Now, the other thing that is interesting about the story, but also bothers me as well, is that though he is buried at Elmwood Cemetery, there is no marker at his grave. So he doesn't have a gravestone, he doesn't have any marker on the spot where he resides to indicate that he's even there. Why that is, I don't know. Um, he was the son of a widow. She probably didn't have enough money to, you know, afford to do anything like that at the time, but still, it just seems weird that over time, nobody's ever put anything there. Like even the cemetery themselves, it seemed like they could put something there. Now, one thing that the cemetery is doing, um, I, I saw an article online lately, is they're working on digitizing their records so taking all the records of the people at the cemetery and putting them online and they actually mentioned claude pew in the article so i'm hoping that they'll at least let people know a little bit more about him and where he's located there um hopefully that'll lead to somebody wanting to put a marker there i don't know but i hope that does happen because that's just that's just awful like it's it's bad enough what happened to this little boy but the fact that he also doesn't even have a gravestone <laughs> like he deserves that so i actually heard about this story um through historical haunts i never heard of it before this um i went on a, a bus tour like a haunted ghost bus tour with historical haunts of memphis and it was awesome <laughs> and uh, it was raining so we didn't get to see as much as we normally would but um, they actually stopped at the fountain at Court Square and we did get to go out um, and walk up to the fountain and that's where we did a paranormal investigation. And so the little boy Claude Pugh does still hang around the fountain. I'll insert some footage on that here in a second. So as far as I know, this is a common stop with that historical haunts bus tour where they stop at different haunted places. They actually stopped at a couple of places I've talked about on my channel. like. Um, the Woodruff Fontaine house, the uh, Mallory Neely house, um, and places like that. So that was fun because I already knew a little bit about those places. But this story was completely new to me, so I knew I had to bring it on my channel. So it is said that Claude Pugh does still hang around the fountain to this day. Um, people like to leave him little toys and things um, for him to play with. So according to the tour guide, he has spoken through on a K2 meter, and she actually had that with her when we were on the tour. She says that he's answered a lot of questions and that though he was 10 years old when he passed away, um, supposedly he has said that he doesn't feel 10 years old anymore. He actually feels more like an adult because he's just been around so long now. Anyway, I'll go ahead and roll the footage of what I took during the paranormal investigation. A couple of years ago in the spring, they put water in the fountain and there was a festival in the park. They loaded the fountain up with beach balls and the beach balls were dancing around the fountain as beach balls do. There's a little girl, she says, Mom, Mom, there's a boy in the fountain. Mother looks, sees nothing. Mom, there's a boy in the fountain. Nothing. Finally, someone says, show me, where is the boy in the fountain? She points to one beach ball that is perfectly still and says, there he is. All right, there was a boy named Claude Pugh. He was 10 years old. He was a newsboy, meaning he delivered newspapers. And he was kind of small for his age, only child, with old mom. And um, he was here, leaning over the edge, playing with his toy boat. And she, he fell into the water. Now at the time, this fence was not here. The fountain was six feet deep and the sides were covered with algae. And Claude didn't know how to swim. Were you in school at the time? Did you blink? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Did they close down school? No? No. Okay. Do you have any questions? I've, I've asked him all kinds of questions. He's answered. I said mom was a widow. I, there is no written fact about that. I mean, I know she was single, but he did tell me once that his dad died of yellow fever, which he died April 1884, which was six years after the huge yellow fever epidemic. So, um, Claude tells me he likes math. 
Claude likes children. One time there was a birthday party for 11 year old boys and he was lighting this thing red all night and the boys said, oh, this is so fake. <laughs> there was a night where we put a, a duck was here. I was actually in training and the, the rubber duck sat in the corner all night. And then the tour guide said, well, I gotta get the duck back. It belongs to my daughter. And the duck started drifting away and somebody's reaching to get it. And she says, Claude, bring it back. And the duck came back. So, um, anybody have any questions for Claude? Hey, Claude, have you seen any horses tonight? Did he see any? So they still yes. ride in the rain? He's saying a lot. To, are you sensing anything from Claude? A little bit, yeah. What are you just, picking up? Well, I just, I can just feel like an energy kind of like moving around. Oh, is he moving Yeah, kind of like walking around. You know, Claude tells me he likes girls. <laughs> and last night we had three 10-year-old boys on this trip. And I said to the 10-year-old boys, you all like girls? And I'm like, no, Claude, you like girls? He, he <laughs> Do you like girls, Claude? I know, that's a stupid question. I asked, I've asked you that many times. <laughs> I know you like girls. So you guys, that is the story of Claude Pugh. That's really all the information I have. There wasn't a whole lot about him other than what happened when he died. Um, but I will say when I was there, I did feel a presence. I, I actually felt the presence of, of someone like shorter than me, <laughs> which is interesting because I usually, I can't really tell necessarily, but it, it felt like a very intense presence kind of to my left. And as you saw in the video, she actually asked me if I felt anything because I told her before, um, we got there that I'm actually psychic and I can, I'm kind of a medium and all that. So it was nice that she was open to that and actually asked me what I felt. But yeah, I felt him to my left at first and then I felt him kind of move around throughout the crowd, almost like he was skipping and, you know, kind of just be bopping around, you know, in the crowd, just like a kid would, you know, they don't just stand in one place. Uh, I didn't really hear a lot of words come through. Some, you know, I'm Claire audience. Sometimes I hear words. I heard happy once. That's about all I heard, you know, because I think at one point she asked, are you sad or something? And he said, happy, you know, is what I heard. So anyway, um, that completes this video. I appreciate you guys watching. Definitely comment down below um, if you're in the Memphis area and you know of anything that you want me to cover on here. I am completely open to that. I have a few stories that I'm planning on doing here soon. But I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, evening, wherever you are, whatever time it is when you watch this video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.